In today's tutorial, we will recreate this countdown timer with background blocks reveal in Adobe Premiere Pro. This countdown timer is based on the text panel in Premiere and can easily be adjusted in the Essential Graphics panel. This means that you can change a lot of things like fonts, colors, size, background, drop shadow and a lot more. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you need to be working in Premiere Pro 15.0 or newer. But if you still run an older version of Premiere, then I would recommend you to watch my other video where I show you how to create this animated countdown timer. Ok, now before I move over to Premiere, a quick shout out to VidEvo for sponsoring this video. VidEvo is an excellent source for free and premium stock footage, music tracks, sound effects and video editing templates. If you choose one of their yearly plans, you can enjoy unlimited downloads on more than 500,000 stock media assets. If you want to give them a try, then use my temporary discount code STORYSHIM20 to claim a 20% discount at your checkout. The links and all the other details can be found in the video description. And now inside Premiere, I've already imported a background video as you can see here. This is an HD 30fps video, so we're going to use these settings to create a sequence. To create this new sequence, I'm going to click on the new items icon here on the bottom and then select sequence. And then go to the settings tab to change the frame rate into 30fps. The resolution is already set to 1920 by 1080 so I will only change the name here to 5 minute countdown and then click OK. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to use the text panel inside Premiere to create the countdown or to be more precise, we're going to use subtitles to create the countdown. In my setup you can find this text panel here, but if you can't find it, make sure you've got the captions and graphics workspace selected up here, or go to the window menu and enable the text panel there. In the next steps we're going to import an SRT or subrip title file by clicking on this button here. An SRT file essentially is a text file containing text and timecode data to display captions or subtitles in a video player, like the YouTube video player that you're watching now. And an SRT file is composed of the following three things. On top you will find a section number. Then below that we've got beginning and ending time code for that section stating hours, minutes, seconds and milliseconds. And then the third line is the actual text or subtitle itself. As you can see here I've made an SRT file that counts down from 5 minutes to 0. If you want you can make your own version or you can simply download my SRT file for free. You can find download links in the video description. Anyway, now that you know what an SRT file is, let's import it into Premiere. I'll click on this button and then a new window will open up where I can browse to the files on my system. I will select the 5 minute countdown SRT file and then click open. In the next window we need to select subtitle and for start point we need to select source timecode and then click OK. And after that you will find all the subtitles inside the text panel as you can see here. And you can also find the same subtitles here on top of the timeline. And because I want to edit them all at once, I'm going to zoom out and then select all the subtitles and move over to the Essential Graphics panel. The first change that I'll do is moving the subtitles to the center of the frame by clicking here. And then I'll also increase the size of the text by using this slider. Let's also change the font of the text, in this case I'll pick something random, like the Anton font. You should also know that if you increase the size of the text a lot more, then it will be invisible. And that's because every subtitle has a text box. The text cannot be larger than the text box or it will become invisible. A simple solution would be to select the text and then increase the size of the text box. Keep in mind that by selecting the text to resize the text box, you've just deselected all the other subtitles. So all these changes are done to this single subtitle only. But there is a way to push all these changes to the other subtitles as well. And to do this, you need to click on this up arrow icon here in the Essential Graphics panel. And then select Push to all captions on track. This will push all the changes over to the other subtitles. So if I scrub to the timeline, you can see that they are all the same. Besides changing the font, the size and the alignment, you could also change the colors of the text inside the Essential Graphics panel. And besides changing the colors, you could also add a stroke or a background or add some drop shadow. So by using subtitles for the countdown, we basically have the same styling options that we have for regular text. The next thing that I want to mention is when you get to the end of the countdown, the last numbers will only stay on screen for one second. But because this is the last subtitle in a row, we can simply extend the duration by pulling it aside like this. This way the last numbers will stay on screen for a couple of seconds. If you want to add more effects to the timer, then I would recommend to nest this sequence. 
You can do this by right-clicking the sequence in the project panel and then select New Sequence from Clip. This will create a new sequence and then import the 5-minute timer sequence as a nested sequence. Now you can add any effect to this nested sequence. You could add the default transition, for example, dip to black in my setup. And because this is now a layer on the timeline, we could add things on top or below the timer. So in this case, I'll make some space for the background video that I mentioned earlier. As you can see, this video won't cover the 5 minute countdown, but this video is loopable. This means that I can make a couple of copies to fill up the entire length of the video. And to do this, I'm going to hold the Alt key on the keyboard and then with the left mouse button, drag it aside to duplicate the video. And I'm going to repeat the same steps a couple of times until I've got enough copies to fill up 5 minutes of video. And after that, I will select all these copies, then right click and then select Nest. Then I'll give this nested sequence the name Background and then click OK. And if I now scrub to the timeline, you can see that the background video covers 5 minutes of video. And then as a final step, I'm going to add a blocks reveal effect to this background video. And to do this, I will go to the effects panel and search for the block dissolve effect, which you can find under video effects transition. I will add this effect to the background layer and then move over to the effect controls panel. We could now animate a blocks reveal by enabling keyframes for transition completion. Then I'll move the first keyframe with value 0 to the beginning and create another keyframe with value 100. Placing the keyframes this way will dissolve the video over time, but still in very tiny blocks as you can see here. In this case, I want the blocks to be a bit bigger, so I'm going to increase the width and height. And I'll also disable soft edges because I want them to be sharp and clear. And this is how the animation now looks between these two keyframes. And if I move this last keyframe to the end, then the background video will dissolve during the 5 minute countdown. If you switch the keyframes, then you can do the opposite by revealing the background video during the 5 minute countdown. In the end, the whole background video part is fully optional of course, but I think it's a nice addition to this countdown timer. Anyway, let's have a look at the final result. And that's it for this countdown tutorial video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, then please like the video, I would really appreciate that. And finally, as always, thanks a lot for watching and I wish you all a wonderful day.